What's up, everybody? Welcome to Kind of Funny Games Daily for Tuesday, October 2nd, 2018, a.k.a. The return of the Reverend Jared Petty. Bum, 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 bum. I have returned invigorated. You from have been the gone too long, Jared Petty. Uh, you know, I, I feel like I've been gone too long. It was great being away. What I was, was it? A full week off? Is that what we full did? Full week off. Okay. okay nine okay. days in the mountains. I'm proud that, you know, when I was in London, you debuted this Hawaiian shirt hat look. Mm -hmm. And I was afraid it was a one time thing and I would never see it again. But here it is again. No, it's back. Uh, it's here to stay, I think. I, I like it. It's a good look. It's a good look. As Natalie Portman would tell Thor in one of the Thors, I forget which one. I think that was the first Thor. Yeah, I think so too. That's very kind of you to say so. No well, problem. I enjoy. I got this this fun hat that I like. Yeah. I enjoy this hat. Uh -huh. and my wife got me this hat, and then the rest just kind of followed. This sure. is from the Doc Brown from the Kind of Funny Prom. Right. Uh, a lot of people saying you had the Max Payne look going on when you had the hat off before. I was like, I agree. I, agree. I, I, I saw I, that too. I think my favorite comment is somebody says, "All I really need at this point is a cigar and a helicopter to yeah. complete the Magnum, ensemble." Yeah. And yeah. I'm just yeah, like yeah. kind of sitting there waiting for the hero, of the movie to come up, and then they get in and I fly them. Yeah. Yeah, exactly, Not exactly. That's a great yeah, one. You're yeah. such a great 80s helicopter pilot right Thank now. Thank you yeah, very yeah, much. Yeah, and Greg Miller, are you also looking very spiffy today? Thank you very much. As always. Thank you. Honestly, you got that, that clean cut. I'm trying look. to come down from the rage of the kind of funny printer. And oh. it's ongoing war with me to make me as late as possible for every show I want to go to. Absolutely. The you kind of funny I mean? printer is, in fact, the devil's butt. It is. It is. It and is. I don't know why it's on a separate Wi-Fi back there. I don't know why it communicates apparently two kilobytes an hour. Yeah, it's just you not going to happen. Just it's it's on its last legs or I will soon destroy it. I think maybe it's time we replace the printer. I don't even know if that would solve the problem. No. That's my fear. It's like what if I do that and then it's still just everything sucks. Well, it could be an so I've been afraid to tell you this. You sure. might know this, but long ago mm -hmm. I was a network administrator, network engineer, okay. and IT guy. Yeah. And I still keep my fingers in that. And I try not to tell people that places I work cuz then they then, want you to hey, help. Hey, we have a lot of problems. Look at all this stuff. Breaks. Yeah. Yeah. But and I trust might me, that happens all the time, right? Cool, right? I may be able to assist you in your printer difficulties. Okay, so I, I think I've just hidden too far okay. behind that wall. Yeah, I'm, it's, I'm at the breaking point where we're going to go to war with this thing soon. Well, to be sure, printers never work. Gary sure. Wood and I once think did about a 10-minute segment on the same printer. And that uh, was the, the thing show. about the kind of funny printer is it was the first printer we had got, I had gotten and had like in my day-to-day -day life is outside of like a workspace, like a personal printer, even yeah. though it's an office. It's the first time I've been living with a printer in well over a decade. Okay. And man, this technology has not advanced. No. It is still shit. Printers and batteries have not yeah. kept up with everything else. Yeah. Either one of those things. I mean, every time they release a new Apple Watch, I'm like, oh, what a cool idea. Now I can talk. Oh, wait, it dies in three hours. I, sure. What use is this? I want... Until I have my Dick Tracy watch that lasts me a day. Yeah. But until batteries can last a day. Maybe it doesn't talk into it though. That's that the thing. No, you got you if you're doing like I don't I don't want a watch that talks to my phone three feet away. Gotcha. Okay. I want Dick Tracy watch. Sure. sure I'm sure, gonna sure. have a that's this is my device. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna have that and it'll last a full day and I can communicate all day with it. Yeah, you're set, you're gold. I'm set, I'm gold. Okay. But until then we're not there. It's all a bunch of bull. If I wanted to know what can no, anyway. If you didn't know, ladies and gentlemen, this is kind of funny games daily each and every weekday in a variety of platforms we run you through the nerdy video game news you need to know about if you like that be part of the show kind of funny dot com slash kfgd with your questions comments concerns bad psn names and everything else under the video game sun then watch it live on twitch.tv slash kind of funny games as we record it if you're watching live you have a special job go to kind of funny dot com slash you're wrong and tell us what we screw up as we screw it up so we can set the record straight for everybody watching later on youtube.com slash kind of funny games and listening on podcast services around the globe housekeeping for you extra life 2018 is november 3rd and we'll be streaming games and shenanigans for 24 hours as we raise money for the children's miracle network hospitals join or donate now at kind of funny.com slash extra life you can also see the official kind of funny community extra life shirt up there all proceeds going to our Extra Life fundraising efforts. Right. And then today, we're brought to you by Third Love and Loot Crate, but I'll tell you about that for now. Later. For now, let's begin <laughs> the show with what is and forever will be a big old Roper Report. Time for some news. Five items on the Roper Report, Cool Greg. A baker's dozen. The first one is for you, Cool Greg. A Harry Potter RPG has apparently been leaked. Information exploding on the internet at the speed of light last night as on our gaming vape this bro put up 
That's what makes it art. That's what makes that's, it art. Thank you, Vape This Bro. Put up a video that has since been delisted and taken down, and Warner Brothers is all over trying to get rid of, uh, showing, though, apparently early footage of a Harry Potter RPG. Let's United read. States Secretary of State, Vape This Bro. Vape This Bro doing God's work out there, right next to J- <laughs> the great names in video game journalism. Jason Schreier, yeah. Patrick Klepek, Vape This Bro. That's right. Uh, Vape This Bro, bro reports that it's uh, set in the 19th century, 1800s, Wizard world. This third person open world action RPG centers around your character with unique abilities who has earned a late acceptance to Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. You are a newly arrived fifth year student to Hogwarts that demonstrates a latent gift for magic with a unique ability to track and identify remnants of a potent ancient power. I believe that's supposed to be potent. I'm just going to say it as Vape's bro wrote yeah, it. You know I, what I mean? Yeah, Come on. I understand that. Upon arrival, strange events begin to materialize in the Forbidden Forest, and trouble begins to brew within the castle walls. Together with Professor Elazar Fig, you embark on a journey through both familiar and never-before-seen locations to bring the light, bring to light the truth behind these mysterious occurrences. On your quest, you will craft potions, master new spells, and discover fantastical beasts. You will battle dark wizards, goblins, and other supernatural enemies, and uncover the truth about your destiny, the fate of the wizarding world lies in your hands. Features. Journey to Hogwarts to become one of eight different wizard types. Experience Hogwarts, make new friends, uncover new secrets, and change the fate of the wizarding world. Experience a new magic system that creates countless possibilities to master magic. Freely explore the wizarding world for the first time. Choose your house and friends at Hogwarts and decide to pursue a path of good or evil. Awesome. Create your own witch or wizard and experience an all-new storyline separate from the books or film. It was also getting called out when this was making the rounds that uh, you're going to have unforgivable curses in there. There will be death in it. There's some, mm. It looked to be some brutal gameplay in the trailer itself along with cre- character creation. This obviously started making the rounds but then started bringing other people out, including Eurogamer's Tom Phillips, who wrote an article about it and then followed up with this update. In a tweet following the publication of Eurogamer's story, BBC News reporter and renowned Potter fan Lizzo Mzimba, uh, shared some of his knowledge of the project, including two possible names. And this is the tweet then. I'm told this is from a yet-to-be-announced RPG currently titled Harry Potter Magic Awakened, although other titles include Magic Forever are also in the mix. Other Potter games are also brought thought to be on their way. Harry Potter, friendship is magic. Exactly. That's what I hope This is what it's all about. The Hufflepuff story. That's what everybody wants. Yeah, nobody wants the Hufflepuff story. You know story. what? I'm not even going to... Uh, the early scuttlebutt and what so many of you wrote into on this was that it was going to be rock steady. Oh my God, is this a rock steady game? Rock steady, rock steady, rock steady. Uh, the rumors here are that it's actually Avalanche Software. You might remember at the, the turn of the year, January, uh, uh, they, it, Warner Brothers bought from Disney Avalanche Software. They'd mm-hmm. done Disney Infinity and car stuff before. And then in April, there were rumors of Aval- Avalanche Software working on a Harry Potter RPG because they'd put up job postings looking for someone with a, you you know, uh, passion for British uh, lore and this b- mm-hmm. branching RPG stuff. And it was like, oh, this is probably for a Harry Potter RPG. So that's where it seems to be. Jared, what is your take on all of this? Rumor, rumored, of course. Rumors. Yeah. But it looked pretty real. Well, let's, in a world of rumors, let's just assume for a second this is actually happening. Yeah. How did it take this long? That's that's my answer. Uh, of all of this, uh, the most encouraging thing for me is that knowledge. Choose your house. Yeah. I mean, it, BuzzFeed pretty much exists because of Disney princesses and quizzes about your Harry Potter house. Sure. Those are the only two reasons for that site to exist, mm-hmm. and it's become a worldwide phenomenon. So understanding that if a person's going to spend their time at Hogwarts, which really should be the star of the story yeah. uh, in this game, yes, yes, you're a character, yes, they're dark wizards, but people know that in those first seven novels, Hogwarts is the star. Part of what makes the final novel so compelling is that you spend so much time away from it, and then, of course, at the final chapter, return to Hogwarts and that's where it all takes place in this epic explosion ending. So yeah, I'm excited. Pick your house. Uh, Team Slytherin. That's me. Really? And, oh, you're not a Slytherin. I'm absolutely. Oh, Cougar, you are a Slytherin. You are, you are fucking locked and loaded. Yeah. Cougar, cool, here's my question for you. Are you going to, th- and I'm not trying to insult you or the games you play or anything like this. Are you ready for an open world RPG Harry Potter game? I'm not going to lie. It looks a little complicated for yeah. me, but I'm, I, I'm enjoy like watching people play. Yeah. I, no, I still think you could do it. Yeah. I still think you, I think this would be what a great way to introduce you to the RP, uh, RPG games, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Role playing yeah, games and true. how you level things up and what kind of choices you make. You have to play. 
end of story. Yeah. You're not allowed just to watch people. You've got to get in there and do this. You have to be Slytherin. You have to represent. And I think right. you nail it right there talking about an intro to the RPG mechanics. I mean, Dungeons and Dragons, the progenitor of all RPGs, three basic classes in the beginning. Fighting man, thief, mage, wizard. Yeah. Yeah. And wizards are made to level up, to grow more powerful. The Harry Potter story is about wizards growing more powerful exactly. as You're they mature learning and grow as you up. get there, right? You have this raw power, you get in there and you start using it. Yeah, that's what it's so going to be about. So RPG mechanics, perfect. Open world because of Hogwarts. I mean, it's it's Serenity on Firefly. It's the Millennium Falcon. It's a character in the story. I mean, you're talking about, and that's the thing too, of like you're talking about like uh, Dungeons and Dragons and the different types of players there, including wizards. Here they are talking about eight different types of wizards, yep. right? Where you're going to have, uh, you know, I'm sure a long range wizard an up close wizard and yeah. a tank wizard and you know somebody wants to hang back and a healing wizard and all that jazz what it's, else are you greg you know it's a great question here's what i'll let you know i am a fan of the underdogs so i've always repped hufflepuff what a great stupid name that never i never gets talked about in the movies in any real regard right yeah i was like why not but of course as you know as everybody watching I took the quiz and I'm Gryffindor because okay. of course I'm the star. Of course yeah. I got to be in the main house doing all the cool things. You so we put I mean? the sorting hat on. Yeah. It's going to tell you Gryffindor. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Exactly. Right. So when I get there, I will be at a, when I get this game, it's going to be a very interesting moment of what do I do? You know what I mean? Do you go with it or you go off? Are we going to go off character? I don't know. I don't know what to do. Where, what's in my heart or what's in, you know, clearly I am one of the cursed children. You know what I mean? I need to keep going. I don't know what I'll do with it. I think you're Gryffindor. You asked an interesting question. Why is it taking so long? Yeah. Rebel Red Panda wrote into kindoffunny.com slash KFGD and says, Growing up, I always dreamed of a Harry Potter MMO, but since the demise of the genre in recent times, it probably won't ever materialize. My question is, do you think this type of game set in the Harry Potter world can be a success and attract its diverse set of fans, some of which play games while others not so much? Uh, I would also like to hear your thoughts on this and if you think it'll be a fully fledged RPG or more of a combat oriented action adventure game well, I think why it took so long and will this be able to attract fans is a similar conversation I'd like to believe it took so long to get to this point because you needed to find the right developer and the right idea for the game. Mm -hmm. I think Warner Brothers had, I mean, if you want to compare Harry Potter to comic book games, right? Like, I reviewed the Harry Potter games at IGN, the ones yeah. that were just like cash-ins where I was one, and they weren't terrible, you know what I mean? But it also was like, you were hamstrung by the idea that, all right, you got to make it at least line up with the movies or books to an extent, but it was movie-based games. Yeah. And then Lego Harry Potter games were great, but that's Lego, and right. that's a very different thing. And so to see them come out now and, you know, they've done the mobile game and they're they're experimenting with this and trying to get it all going. I think that they'd like as WB to take what again, this is not Rocksteady, take what Rocksteady did for Batman and apply this to it of like, OK, let's do this game, but let's do it right. Let's not rush it. I think the fact that Harry Potter has this lasting appeal and has continued to go on and granted you know fantastic beasts and where to find them and all that jazz is happening as well yeah but the fact that harry potter fandom hasn't lost any momentum and the fact that there's new fans be reading the books every day watching the movies every day and the old fans are still looking for ways to engage with the universe i think it's a perfect marriage here of we wanted to find the right game the right studio we have hopefully i mean we're going i'm hypothesizing that mm -hmm. and now we want to put out an adult game that is an rpg that is not obtuse for everyone but it yeah. is like i mean cool greg's never played an rpg he doesn't mm -hmm. know what he's about to get into yeah, yeah. Well, i think that's the kind of thing it, it could be a gateway for that sort of thing uh, i mean i think rpg makes the most sense for a harry potter game the lego games are delightful mm -hmm. but an rpg it, it's just so perfectly suited to the it's thematically congruent not just in the wizarding end but again it's a story about growing up harry potter is about growing up rpgs are about growing up sure and that's why I think it work, it's going to work. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm super excited. Do you think it's going to be a full-fledged RPG like Rebel Panda saying, or do you think it's going to be an action-adventure game? I think it's pretty early to say one way or the other. Um, I think that what we call an RPG now is so difficult to, to describe. Yeah. I think if we're going to say, like, people say The Witcher 3 is an RPG, but really The Witcher 3 has as much in common with Zelda as it does an RPG. Um, I think we're leaning more toward the Witcher 3 style approach to yeah. the RPG. The I would even say like RPG. Assassin's Creed or, or Odyssey right now or Origins yeah. and the way you're going to get skill points and invest them into this thing that you, yeah. how do you, what, what spells and kind of yeah. wizarding are you into? All right, we're going to keep increasing that. You know what I mean? I wouldn't be surprised if there is gear of finding new wands or upgrading your wand and stuff to that effect. What I, what I hope for, and I didn't see any mention of here, but it, I've always dreamed that whatever kind of Harry Potter game you had would yeah. have social links something like persona oh i feel like that that school day routine is just i 
ideally suited to that kind of social link dating. Sims, I mean, one of the things they call experience system. Hogwarts and make new friends. Now, granted, yeah, that can be, but whatever, it, that can be like run up to like, hello, Ron. Exactly. You know? But yeah, what yeah. if it's like, I, I, I love, the, I love idea. the idea that it's in the 1800s. You too. Got, oh, I, no, of that's like, perfect. Let's go far enough back to tell you an original story and have fun with it and not be bogged down by what's happening either in the Fantastic Beasts or what's happening in Harry Potter. My Harry Potter fanfic drafts are all little. Oh, thank God you turned the fan on. It is so hot right now. Oh, Nick ruins everything. Yeah, you know, it, it, it's it always is very much like I'm in shape. I don't need it. And I'm like, you're an idiot. You know, it is you. very hot in here. At this moment. In here. Thank yeah, you yeah. for turning that fan. I got on. you. That was sweet of you. Uh, but you know, Harry Potter fanfic dream would be to go all the way back to the literally the founding of the school. Oh, to take really? the four. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, I want to write. There should be novels. Why are there not novels called Ravenclaw, Slytherin, Gryffindor, and Hufflepuff? I'm sure, there will be one day about the four founders and each of them telling an independent part of the story of the founding of the school. Like, yeah. I, so going back in time, love it. Yeah, uh, I adore Harry Potter. It's a criminally neglected video game universe, very much IP. like we've talked about with Superman before. Yeah. Uh, yes, yeah, so it goes all the way back to the Game Boy Color. I understand that. But we're finally going to get the game we deserve. Well, we'll see. Let's and not get ahead of ourselves because, honestly, that was my first reaction of watching it. And granted, this is early footage. This is not how they wanted to see it. It's blurry screen, et cetera, et cetera, asterisk, asterisk. Watching it last night and people are like, it's a rock city game. We're like, okay, no. Like mm -hmm. this doesn't look like Rock City, and I'm not mm -hmm. insulting Avalanche for what they they put out there, right? I was just like, or whoever the developer is. Yeah, you were talking about Avalanche, and I get that, but you were talking about them being acquired in like April, right? Or the April's postage? when the rumors happen. It was in January that they got acquired by. D okay, WB. you could have something that looked like that in in. T Especially months. if it was a teaser reel, right? Or if it's a vertical slice, or what we're talking <sighs> yeah, about. Yeah, you could have so. that in ten months. Yeah, uh, it, it, that, that that could be done. I don't know though. We'll see. And that's the thing is it's all rumors. And again, we're all jumping to the conclusion as Avalanche software. Maybe it's somebody else. Maybe I'll eat my words and it is Rock City. Who knows? Make a DC game. Number two Animal Crossing Switch may be coming as early as Q1 2019. This is from Pixel Par at Loot Pots. Okay, what I what is going on here today? For we we're starting with with Vape Bro. Yeah. Now Vape we're at Pixel Par. Hey, Pixel Par and uh, Loot Pots. I saw this pop, yeah. of course, on Reset Air. What up, Reset Air? And uh, I kicked it over to Tim. I'm like, is this trustworthy? Have you heard something about these? He's like, this lines up with rumors I've been hearing. So I thought it was worth putting on everybody's radar. Loot Pots, the secret child of Tony Stark and Pepper Pots. Oh, okay. I like what you did yeah, there. Yeah, that's right. That's what yeah. you got there. Loot Pots. Information. From one of our sources suggests that Animal Crossing on Nintendo Switch is most likely set for a late Q1 or early Q2 calendar year release date, uh. which in layman's terms means sometime around March slash April 2019. The game is also rumored to be targeting a suggested retail price of $59.99, while an earlier release may sound fantastic, and this particular source has been correct in the past, it's always best to take rumors with a pinch of salt. It's rumor cast today. Hey man. Well, no, I hear, but yeah, yeah, man, and no, man. Like, okay, for that's a legit leak. Yeah, Harry Potter is not a rumor. That yeah, is a yeah, real yeah, game yeah, we're yeah. looking at. Unless somebody's like, you know, let's really fuck with the world. <laughs> let's make a let's make a vertical slice. All this information, put it out there, and then uh, the next day, be like, fuckers, the not world's real greatest at all, idiots. <laughs> yeah, this one, who knows? Oh yeah, but again. It's conversation. I like to put it on people's radar. I know how much people want Animal Crossing. I want Animal Crossing. No, I'm with you. Get hype. Yeah, okay. uh, I, I am totally on board. I love rumors. Uh, that was one of my very favorite parts of working at IGN Wikis yeah. uh, when I did was that IGN News was not going to cover rumors very often. Yeah. yeah but yeah. Wikis, we were totally free to be like, hey, by the way, this Wild is a West. rumor. You know, there's a yeah. thing out there we can talk because it, it, we could be transparent about that and be like, hey, this is crowdsourced anyway. So why yeah. not talk about it? Yeah. I love that part. Anyway, okay. please continue. No, that's it. I just wanted to put it out there on everybody's radar. OK, that I, sounds great. I go for Animal Crossing earlier, yeah. sooner than later. I want to cross some animals. Number three. Game Informer's November cover is dreams. Reading from Whoa! Game Informer's article, our November issue chronicles the sights and sounds we saw and made in dreams and outlines why we came away believing in the promise of Media Molecule's bold vision. We have exclusive details on the game's story mode, tools, and much more. Starting this week, we'll also have exclusive online content to support the story, including features, interviews, and gameplay footage. Interesting. Yes. Very dreams very getting a cover at Game Informer. Okay. I, I'm okay. just glad dreams exists and may Me one too. day arrive. Yeah. Uh, yeah no, totally. So we talked to this before. I love fooling around with game creation programs. I do a lot of demoing and things like that. And dreams has held a, captivated me since, since yeah. it was first teased. Uh, I was really worried that we were at the point that this might end up being a PS5. Oh wow! Uh, program and I think it still might be. Wow! It's over really? Uh, yeah. They've been getting more and more aggressive. I mean, this being the the most hey how aggressive we are about it. But like in terms of letting people actually play at at E three and Judges Week and stuff like that, yeah. I think they're getting closer. But, but I mean, I think PS five is a twenty twenty 
console and the soonest we're going to get dreams is late 2019 probably yeah i mean this that hold on ben from ireland writes into kind of funny.com slash kfgd and says hi hey guys with dreams getting an exclusive month of coverage on game informer this month are we close to finally getting a release date Release dates for other PlayStation exclusives got announced around the same time they got Game Informer coverage. God of War gets covered by Game Informer in January, and its release date is announced on January 23rd. Spider-Man coverage gets announced on April 3rd, and the next day the release date is announced. And finally, Days Gone has a month of coverage in May, and its release date gets announced on June 7th. Will this trend continue, and will we get a release date about Dream or for Dreams? I'm sorry, sometime within the next month. Keep up the great work, Ben from Ireland. My friend, are you ready for a Jared rant? Here we go. All right, here we go. Jared rant begins now. In my opinion, the most important event in the history of console video games occurred 40 years ago this year. Okay. With the invention of something called the Disk 2, which was a floppy disk drive for the Apple II computer. Okay. Up to that point, floppy disk drives were ridiculously expensive and nobody could afford them. Therefore, the only ways to play games were at an arcade or from a cartridge or off a super duper, uber slow, unreliable cassette tape. Then the disc two came along. Now it was heralded as the, the growth of big business software, you know, word processors, spreadsheets, we can make a computer useful. And yes, it was. But what it really did for us was create a world where eventually video games would be able to one, read data and two, write data. And that read write data changed the way games were designed. You can't have games like The Legend of Zelda in a world where you can't save. And you certainly can't have games like Super Mario World that are too long to play at one sitting. Any game that was too long to play sure. at one sit down was impossible. It transformed us from a quarter arcade culture into a culture that gets games like Odyssey and Red Dead and God of War and all these masterpieces of storytelling that we enjoy today. What we get with dreams is a new fulfillment of that kind of vision, putting the power of writing into your hands, not just in experiencing somebody else's story, but creating your own. They get one shot at this and they don't want to fumble it. I know how painful the pressure of running out of money can be for a dev. I also know that there have to be people in Media Molecule fighting to make sure this thing is ready because you get one and only one shot to try something brand new and get people to buy in. Yeah. Therefore, I believe that the date on this will be announced sometime next year. Okay. You think it's going to hang on that yes, long? Yes, that was a long answer to a short question, but I think it bears that kind of context. Oh, no. You get, this isn't other games. This isn't just another game creation program. This is an attempt to take game creation and bring it into the mainstream on console, something that's only been attempted with a few other times with Little Big Planet, for example. Sure. You screw this up, you don't get another shot. I think you get the release date at the end of this coverage. Wow. I think I think that this is them saying, all right, cool, let's build up. It is a 2019 game. Let's get going. Let's like I, I think that if you are showcasing this much of this game, it speaks to me that yeah, PlayStation's confident enough to be like, all right, cool, this is its moment. You know what I mean? And you talk about not fumbling it with all due respect to Media Molecule, PlayStation, uh, the Dreams team, I think it's been fumbled up until this point. Like you need to get not serious because I I'm this because I know the people at Media Molecule. I know how yeah. talented they are. I know how vast this game is. There needs to be the elevator pitch because there has not been the elevator pitch at any of them of what this game is. How what if I'm if I'm trying to explain to you the player what is this thing? It's you're you can build anything and there's this cool leveling system that Greg likes a lot. But there's this thing and like it finally started to get get in, in, into the thing of like. All the story levels are the dreams of that musician guy. Okay, we're, we're getting there. You know what I mean? And like, does everyone know what that in, the imp is called the imp? And that's what it like. So what do you think happened? I think, what do I think happened? Yeah. What do you mean? They got him so like, off track? Okay, what do you think happened from, obviously they, obviously they announced too early. They released details of the wrong kind in yeah. the wrong order. Yeah. Do you think that the plan went horribly awry somewhere along the way, or do you think it was overambitious? Do you think, they I think it was overambitious? I think it was overambitious, and I think Media Molecule, and this isn't taking away from anybody in any way, or shape, or form, I hope, is the last real holdover of the PlayStation 3 generation of PlayStation that was. Do whatever the fuck you want. Make weird shit. Mm -hmm. Go make weird shit and we'll figure it out. We'll figure out uh, the audience that is PlayStation, the hardcore audience that owns this PlayStation 3 as we are so far behind Xbox and trying to make up ground. 
they love the artsy fartsy. That's they, my favorite PlayStation. Exactly, right? <laughs> of like, make me sure, make little Big Planet, make this thing. Let's make crazy shit together, right? Yeah. And we launched into PlayStation Four, still in a let's make fun artsy shit and da da da. And then it really became, oh fuck, people love games. They want games. Okay. Uh, man, what works with Naughty Dog? All right, single player, them doing stuff. Uh, grounded stories that are interesting, that are substantive, that are this, that, and the other. All right, cool. Uh, God of War, make it like that. Death Stranding, we're going to look like this. You know what I mean? Uh, Spider Man, bring in this IP and blah, blah, blah. Like, it became, they've become this powerhouse of games you glance at and get. Okay. You know what I mean? Look at Drawn yeah. to Death. Drawn to Death is a great example of uh, somebody who got caught in the. Hey, we're going from PlayStation 3 to PlayStation 4. Make weird shit, Jaffe. Oh, my God. How do we pitch this weird shit? Yeah. Uh, the, I don't think the PlayStation 4 that exists... Or I shouldn't even say that. I don't think the PlayStation that exists in 2018 is the PlayStation that would greenlight Sony San Diego to be like, oh, you guys are interested in free-to-play stuff? Make a bunch of weird okay. shit. Make yeah. a bunch of weird shit, and we'll see what works. You know what I mean? Like, guns up and uh, the kill strain. You the know kind I mean? of stuff you have to do when, frankly, you're fighting for your life. Yeah, when, like, as you see Xbox taking chances and doing yeah. weird shit, right? Yeah. PlayStation 4 doesn't do that in that way anymore. And I'm, because I'm, I, I, we can't have this conversation about weird shit and ignore PlayStation VR. Yeah. We can't ignore that, yes, they do do weird shit. Play Link. They do yeah. take these shots. But not these biggest shots anymore, right? No, and, and uh, someday, someday, somebody's going to get ahead and then they're going to keep taking shots while they're ahead. Yeah. And then the world's going to change. I don't think it's ever happened. And it's, in the, same th and it's the same thing. Of, <laughs> I don't mean to. I'm not at all trying to uh, dampen what PlayStation does do. No, we got, we got playing, Horizon, Spider-Man, and God are, of War. Which right? are weird <laughs> shots, right? Take take our IP. Well, for God of War, take an IP that you know and love. Make it totally different. Spider-Man is a weird exclusive that, I mean, every kid said it was going to be great, but Insomniac fucking crushes it. Horizon, stop making Killzone, which is a successful thing, and make it just, you know, this new thing. Take a chance. I get all that. My favorite thing about Horizon as it killed Killzone. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> Don't worry. Killzone's always, I'm sure, one breath <laughs> from coming back. But Dreams is this PlayStation media molecule holdover of like, Cool, you've made this really weird thing, and whew, I don't know. Yeah. I think it's I think Media Molecule is incredibly talented. I think the game looks super cool. Uh, like I said, when I left that E3 demo, I immediately grabbed Andy and signed him up to go back in because it is that thing of holy shit. Maybe I just want, I, you know, like me, me personally, right? I, I don't, I was never great at creating levels in the yeah. big planet, but like I love helping out the audience. So if the audience is like, hey, do you want to record VO for this thing? Sure. Upload those VO tracks, let people do it, right? Yeah. Andy just wants to make models and upload those for people to use. Mm -hmm. We all get the XP. It's this real yep. community. Like, that's awesome. But there are so many if statements in that thing of making sure that actually ha is, is a success and gets out there and does its thing and find the audience of creators it's going to find regardless yes but it's going to find enough of an audience to pay for what they've spent to make this when thing playstation this looks at this and this is again playstation of 2018 a playstation that does close down first parties that don't do you know right. well anymore playstation 3 first parties right Make weird shit. Whatever. It'll probably be fine. We'll figure it out. You'll get another shot. And of course, there's examples of them closing stuff in the PlayStation 3 era. I'm being very broad and fast okay. and loose here. But I think the requirements and the expect expectations are different now. And I think that if you're a media molecule and you release this game and it's not received well and finds its audience, does really well and, does, and sells... I, I don't think... And I, <laughs> this pains me to say. Again, I, I know people in media molecule and I know how talented they are. I don't think Dreams can sell enough to be a success enough for PlayStation to look at it and be like, that was a great investment on Earth. Let me ask you something. Yeah. If Dreams ended up containing a feature where you didn't even have to own Dreams, but you could pop onto PSN, PS Plus, yeah. PS Now, somewhere, and play Dreams levels that other people had created without ever owning Dreams, yeah. do you think that would do anything to compel, uh, to compel purchasing of it? Do you think that that would help? I, we've talked about this in the show before. Of what if you did a PlayStation Plus and you did a Dreams Lite? You did like Drive Club Lite, Lite for PlayStation Plus yeah. when they kind of did that and screwed it up. But you put out some kind of Dreams that has a dampener on it where you get a taste of it and you get to understand what's happening. Well, I think what it would be is not even creation tools so much as just taking complete games that people have made or complete levels sure. and throwing them up, up as independent executables. Yeah. Um, I mean, the, the that could be cool and exciting, but even then it's just like I don't understand 
for a free, let's uh, it's not, I know you're not making it free to play, but how are you, how are you giving them enough of a taste where I play those levels and I'm like, fuck, I really want to buy dreams now. Mm -hmm. What if you uh -huh. don't charge for dreams? What if you charge for the levels? For example, somebody comes out and is sure. like, here's my 99 cent game that's getting picked up by kind of funny and IGN and everybody I mean, that's else. That like, I, that's such a, that's such a far flung everyone. future uh, that they don't have the infrastructure for that will so. never happen. Okay, you know what I mean? Right. I think your idea of it being like, yeah, yeah, we give you a few levels. Like, I love the idea of like, I know some people hated it, but it was because you had to buy it or whatever. Remember when kind of funny.com slash you're wrong if I'm wrong on this one. I want to say it was Shadow of the Colossus. Not the new one, but maybe a remaster, whatever. It auto installed to your XMB basically mm -hmm. on PlayStation 4. And it was that thing of it was there. And if you tried to click on it, it'd be like, oh, do you want to pay for this? Like, mm. that was a weird move. And they didn't do it for a lot of people. Yeah. It might have just been beta. I think I want to say somebody at Polygon reported on it or did, had it happen to them. If they were to do that with Dreams levels, where you just turn it on one day and it's like, hey, why are you there? We levels. auto update it. It's free. Yeah. Play, the, play these. You know, this is a level pack for you to play. You don't need to yeah. buy Dreams. That could be could interesting. Work. But I think. I think I just miss Xbox a XNA Indies. Oh, sure. I think more than anything. I else. think this Game Informer <laughs> is. I was. I'm not even going to say as important. I think it's more important than Days Gone's Game Informer, where you've got to come out and be like, this is what this game is. And what I like about it, right, is what they what Game Informer writes, right? Chronicles the sights and sound we saw and made in dreams, and outlines why we came away believing in the promise of Media Molecule's bold vision. Mm. That's what I. And I don't know are rolling it and I don't know how to say it correctly but that's the same thing I feel I believe in this game being something r fucking incredible mm -hmm. and is going to lead to amazing things but that's the artist artsy fartsy Greg talking right yeah. there is still the business of man this game's been in development a long time and what do they expect and how much does it cost to run that first party and, and this is this is this is dreams after two tearaways that did not set the world on fire. You well, know what I mean? Well, seeing, seeing things fail over and over, seeing good things fail over and over does tend to make us, even people who love games, yeah. and you and I both really love oh, games, sure. tends to per, put a healthy amount of cynicism inside us about what might happen yeah. in the marketplace. But if I can strip that aside for a second, when a game company does not choose to hold its audience in contempt, when it chooses to believe in its audience, to trust them, to be smart enough to try something new, to give it a shot, a lot of times that fails. But when it succeeds, we call those moments the milestones yeah. on which this industry rests. Yeah. And so while there's this part of me that wants to be cynical about what's possible or, or what's going to happen, there's another part of me that believes that there is evidence in the past that we sometimes suppress a little bit in our minds, I think, because we've seen so many failures, that the big splashes are the things none of us see coming that somebody took a shot at. That's what I hope for from this. And me too, man. I really do. And, and here's my thing about the Game Informer stuff. If it doesn't end in a release date, and this might be the Achilles heel of my argument of it ending a release date, it has to end with... And here's the beta release date or the beta is available now. Something like this is that. a beta they've been talking about for years that it was always supposed to be this next summer and it never, ever happened. A beta release date, I think, is more more likely uh, than a release date. I, I think they want to avoid crackdown syndrome at all costs. Oh, phew, yeah. And are I we mean, not already there? Like, you know what I mean? Like, well, they haven't announced a date. That's the I crackdown just gets this impression sure, of that's being true. that it keeps getting punted. Yeah. 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 We're upon this. You, you've got a situation where you, you really do feel like this could actually be a PS5 game and who would know the difference? Yeah. But then the other question too, to, to or the poignant point, I guess, right, is what you're talking about of like these m watershed moments, right? Where this changes things and this is a huge deal and you hear so much about it. I would put it in, and I know it's not exactly apples to apples, but it's the same thing right now with PlayStation VR and AstroBot. Right, where like that game's getting tens, and people, are, some people are saying, and I think it's a bridge too far, but it's a great game. It's like it's doing for VR what Super Mario sixty four did for three D. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And that's awesome. Are, are those accolades leading to people running out and buying a PlayStation VR and Astrobot, or is it just something a lot of people going, oh, that's really cool. I'm playing Odyssey and I'm getting ready for Red Dead. I think that there's a lot of truth to what you said there. I think that's an astute analysis. Uh, I also think that. Dreams is going to cost sixty dollars, yep, and I know. PS VR is going to cost yep a couple of and hundred. I hear you, and I hear you, I hear, I totally get it. But again, if it's like, are we when it drops, are we going to be saying at release when there's all this fervor for it, holy shit, the levels that are included in this game are amazing and must play, or are we going to be saying, holy shit, the creation tools are so cool? Now let me ask you this. Okay, so we got Media Molecule here. This is an unlikely scenario, but it is something I thought about. Every generation, new hardware launches, and there's nothing to do on it. Yeah, you know, we get yeah. we get we get knack, we get launch games. Sure. 
Uh, and our Lord and Savior Nick. Huh? Our Lord and Savior Nick. Exactly. Our Lord and Savior Nick. We get that stupid Roman game that came out with Xbox Rome, One, yeah. whatever that thing was. Uh, if it's true that PS5 is effectively just an upgraded PC and will be backwards compatible yeah. with PS4, which seems very likely. Yeah. Why not target this as a PS5 game and make it your pack in? Give you something to do. User generated content. Sure. Something completely new and innovative and something to do with your hardware for months while people are learning to make games for it. Yeah. For your PS5. That's interesting. Make the ship. The only in. thing would be though, like like what a of like, hey, my launch game and my packing game for my brand new hardware is this thing you've been hearing about for four years. And again, mm -hmm. it gets in their hands and it doesn't install base and fucking nobody was bitching when uh, Breath of the Wild launched with Switch. Like, yeah, we, if it's fun, I don't think anybody's going to care. Kay. I mean, it's Geo Wars. Uh, Geo Wars was the best game on 360 when it launched. Yeah, and no one cared that Geo Wars could easily have run on Great the point. PlayStation Great One point. in a slightly inferior form. So why not? If it's fun, that's what matters. It's a good point. It's going to be interesting. I'm very interested to see what Game Informers got up their sleeve and what news we're going to get out of this. This was an interesting discussion. You know, we do, though, sometimes here on Kind of Funny Games. I hope these folks thought so, too. I hear they all hung up. <laughs> uh, number four. <laughs> CD Projekt Red is going. <laughs> not really. I put ver I said my, the, what I boiled the headline down to is CD Projekt Red versus the Witcher author. This is from James Bachelor over at GamesIndustry.biz. Dr draw your silver swords right. right now. The writer behind the original Witcher stories that inspired the best selling RPGs wants a bigger share of the money they're making and it has been denied. Uh, developer CD Projekt Red posted a regulatory notice observing it had received an official demand for payment from author. Andres Sapowski and even shared the original document. I cut all that out because it gets in a very legal jargon. All right. Yeah. In it, Sapowski's legal representatives can convey his request for at least 60 million Polish lots. That's uh, $16.1 million, arguing the studio has exceeded its rights to use the author's IP, and he is therefore owed, owed a share of the revenues CD Projekt is generating with his creation. Sapowski's representative says it is still willing to arrange a meeting by October 19th to discuss this, providing CD Projekt Red responds within 14 days. The studio has already responded, rejecting the request and claiming Sapowski, quote, expects payment of additional royalties beyond what had been contractually agreed upon between himself and the company. It goes on. In the company's opinion, the demands expressed in the notice are groundsless with regards to their merit, as well as the stipulated amount the firm wrote in its regulatory notice. The company has legitimately and legally acquired copyright to Mr. Sapowski's work, IA, insofar as is required for its use in games developed by the company. All liabilities payable by the company in association therewith have been properly discharged. Man, legal stuff, you know? Legally. Yeah, yeah. The notice goes on to say CD Projekt is keen to maintain good relations with authors of works which have inspired our own creations and will go to great lengths to ensure amicable resolution of this dispute. Our sister site, Eurogamer, interviewed Sapowski last year, who admitted he regretted rejecting CD Projekt original royalties proposal. Quote, they offered me a percentage of their profits. I said, no, there will be no profit at all. Give me all my money right now. The whole amount. It was stupid. I was stupid enough to leave everything in their hands because I didn't believe in their success. But who could foresee their success? I couldn't. Okay, I'm not... There's the nut of the argument. Yeah. I fucked up when I initially did this. Someone give me money. I'm not a legal expert but uh, at all, yeah. but I have learned some things about civil legal process in my life. And one of the things I've learned is that civil legal process appears to largely be about what you can get away with. Unlike criminal cases where you're yeah. talking about breaking a law, civil suits, which take place between people are, who are arguing different sides of something about who who is owed what, et cetera, those are largely about perception about they're still about fact gathering but ultimately they're largely about negotiation this is probably a man who is in fact responsible for good portions of the world that cd project of Red has profited off of of course being unhappy with his original deal and quite blatantly coming out and my suspicion i can't prove any of this is that he's simply trying to leverage a new negotiated settlement. Yeah. He doesn't expect $16 million from this. You I shoot think. high and they come back yes. and counter offer. And he is, I suspect, he and his lawyer are betting that the press around this and the legal kerfuffle is worth enough to see the Project Red to pay him more money. Yeah. 
than it is to let this drag out and continue to be a news story for years. I could be completely wrong about that. There may be nuances in this case, I don't know. There may be contract things that have not been revealed and I don't wanna speak irresponsibly, but just with this tiny amount of information in front of us, it looks like a negotiating tactic and I suspect CDPR will meet with them and something will be worked out and everybody that will That sounds in line with what I would think as well, right? Because basically what this is, is this would then be the hanging shadow over everything for The Witcher, right? As we get to The Witcher Netflix series and everyone wants to talk about that and the game and then it's always going to be this anecdote of like, oh, hey, and remember how the fucking like CD Projekt Red won't pay the guy who did this thing? And it's like, yeah. it gets lost that, yo, he turned it down. Yeah. They, they were like, do you want percentages? He's like, nah, just give me my money right now. No, I've heard this story many, many times. Uh, I think this is correct that like the band The Inner Circle got paid like 15 thousand dollars to give the bad boys theme to cops the tv show oh geez you know you hear that ba- you yeah, think yeah, of yeah, cops yeah. you think of bad boys yeah, yeah, they got totally. paid like fifteen thousand dollars one time yeah, yeah, yeah for yeah. that because that was the deal they signed <laughs> and they never got <laughs> any royalties for that as far yeah, as i know right, right. on the other hand you think about somebody like george lucas yep. and that's famous story i'll oh, take a pay cut to get some merchandising rights for the sequels yeah, yeah. i i i write for a living I care about what I write. I want to retain some creative control over what I write and how it's used. And I want to profit from what I write. So I sympathize with that perspective, but I also sympathize with CDPR having made an offer. Yeah. All right. That would have made this man rich. That was turned down. We're locked in. Let's move on. (laughs) Not so fast. Number five on the Roper Report, the final story of the day comes from Hayden Taylor over at GamesIndustry.biz who writes in and says, hey, Minecraft is still crushing it. No. Minecraft is the second highest selling game of all time and enjoys 91 million monthly active users, Microsoft has revealed. While Fortnite continues to dominate headlines for its meteoric rise in record-breaking endeavors with 48 million players monthly you. With 48 million players, monthly users, in August, it still lives in the shadow of Minecraft. The latest figures from Minecraft show that, with 154 million copies sold, Minecraft remains among the most dominant forces in the industry, ahead of Grand Theft Auto V and behind only Tetris. That open world classic, Tetris. Tetris. Ding, 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 ding. God, I can't wait for Tetris Effect. Oh, yeah. That, that, <laughs> uh, yeah, I just wanted to call that because we talk so much about Fortnite and Grand Theft Auto and stuff. I think Minecraft does get lost in the mix. So. And it shouldn't. Congrats to them. Yeah, still not just one of the most successful games of all time, but one of the best video games I've ever played. Great game, Minecraft. Yeah. Yep. Jared, I'm excited to see if there's ever a Minecraft two, or if PlayStation is going to let crossplay happen with Minecraft. But those answers are so far away. They are. If I wanted more immediate video game news, say release dates for Mom and Grop video game shops, where would I go? Well, I'd probably go to your pants. But if I didn't go there, I'd go to the official list of upcoming software across each and every platform, as listed by the kind of funny Games Daily show hosts each and every weekday. Mm-hmm. I don't know why I said your pants. It's fine. I'm not going to judge it. Let's move on. Out today. It's the same list as yesterday because I read yesterday's games. I read today's list yesterday. Oh, you only caught it on Mega Man, though. You're wrong. Why are you sleeping at the wheel? <laughs> Astrobot Rescue Rescue Mission is on PlayStation VR. Fist I of the... That's a fine game. Me too. I mean, I played it. Judge Week, I can't... Uh, my uh, friend Poe leaves. He's been visiting. He leaves this afternoon. I have a couple hours before I fly to New York tonight. I'm hoping I can actually play some there. Although I'll probably end up doing Odyssey. Mm-hmm. Fist of the North Star Lost Paradise comes to PlayStation 4. Forza Horizon 4 comes to Xbox One. Mega Man 11 comes to PS4, Xbox One, Switch, and PC. Woo-hoo! You like it, right? Uh, yeah, what I've played of it. Uh, okay. I like it quite a bit. I'll have more to say about Mega Man in a few days, probably for Gamescast. Okay, Gamescast yeah, on Thursday. What I have played of it, I really like. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Pato Box comes to PlayStation Vita. That's it a lives. neat little game. What is it? Uh, it's it's kind of like if Mike Tyson's Punch Out were an adventure game done in the Mad World art style, where you play a giant pigeon. Okay. Yeah. Easy platinum. Uh, I don't know. What okay. are these what is platinum? But it's it's a really neat, artistically interesting take on Mike Tyson's Punch Out slash wandering around and looking for things. Okay. Uh, Racket Fury Table Tennis VR comes to PlayStation VR. Uh, Valtherian Arc School Story... No, yeah, Hero School Story comes to PlayStation 4, Switch, and PC. Twilight Path launches today on Steam VR and Oculus for $14.99. New, <coughs> new dates for you. Project High Rise Architects Edition comes to Nintendo Switch, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One November 13th. <coughs> you alright, man? No. I'm too excited for Project High Rise Architects Edition. <laughs> XCOM 2 War of the Chosen gets a tactical legacy pack on October 9th on PC. Meanwhile, deals of the day. Jared, you put this one in there. I did. Uh, Greg Miller, there's been no big Twinfinite, and I've been on. we got to fix that. So, fix it up. 
GOG celebrates 10 years with a huge sale and giveaway. This by Tom Meyer of Big Twinfinite. GOG, otherwise known as Good Old Games. DRM-free digital marketplace GOG is marking its 10th anniversary with a giant sale, feature game bundles, and giving away free copies of one of three potential games. Mm. The anniversary sale features plenty of discounts on new and old DRM-free games. Whoa. And that's, that's GOG's great innovation. That's what they were all about. Yeah, yeah they're all up at the DRM-free. Including Into the Breach, Hollow Knight, Return to Castle Wolfenstein. The store features collections of games for a fixed price, such as, here's an example, Another World, Dungeon Keeper 2, System Shock 2, and Theme Hospital for $5 Whoa. as a pack. That's pretty great. Yeah. GOG is also allowing users to vote on one of three games that will be given away on Thursday, October 4th. The games are Firewatch, Shadow Warrior 2, and Super Hot. Three really interesting Super games. Hot. The sale begins today, and it ends uh, Sunday, October 7th. Why is this notable? GOG, good old games, originally began as a really cool service that took old, awesome PC games and wrapped them in a nice, simple emulator so they just run on modern computers. They still sell those, DRM-free, but they also sell modern titles. And they're a cheap, interesting, well-put-together alternative to Steam that doesn't force you to work with digital rights management. And they also have, if you're looking for ways to make old games work on your modern PC, man, they're fantastic. Uh, check this sale out. I'm a big fan of GOG. Awesome. It's time for Reader Mail, but first, I'll tell you it's brought to you by Third Love and Loot Crate. Third Love has an offer for all kind of honeys out there. It's the perfect bra. Using thousands of real women's measurements, Third Love designs its bras with breast size and shape in mind so that they fit impeccably and feel even better. Third Love just added 24 new sizes, making them the industry leader with a total of 70 sizes. Skip the trip. Find your perfect fit in 60 seconds online. Order and try at home. No more awkward fitting room experiences. g -Love her strapless ones. Her friend's boyfriends love the black lacy one, and Jen didn't love hers. She bought one too big, but Third Love's easy and free exchange makes it simple to get the right one. Uh, this is hands down the most comfortable bra you'll own. It's tagless, so there's no itching. Third Love knows there's a perfect bra for everyone, so right now they're offering my listeners 15% off your first order. Go to thirdlove.com slash games to find your perfect fitting bra and get 15% off your first purchase. That's thirdlove.com slash games for 15% off today. There we go. Loot Crate. Oh, Jared, who loves Loot Crate? I a love monthly Loot Crate. subscription box delivered direct to your door with exclusive pop culture uh, collectibles and apparel and gear. Answer, everyone. I what do you got? What are you doing? What are you doing? I got right here. Got my Loot Crate in the oh, mail the other day. Oh, you got it. Yeah, Loot Crate fashion. Loot Venom Crate shirt right there. Got the oh. We Are Venom. Oh, whoa, yeah. That's, yeah, a, that's an awesome here. Venom shirt. Yeah, actually. I just came in there. I got the Loot Crate the other day. I was like, yeah, this is very exciting. Yeah. Lots of my DC uh, comics pops are from Loot Crate. And don't get me started on all the Rick and Morty stuff Kev has from them. This month's theme is Nightmare. Fight back against malevolent forces with gear from Soul Calibur 2, Silent Hill, Psychonauts, and Cuphead. There's even Loot Gaming now. Loot Gaming is curated of a collection of exclusive one of a kind items from the best video game franchises around. Uh, loot crate packs start at six. Or I'm sorry, they pack sixty dollars of value into each crate for less than twenty nine dollars a month. You can't lose. Loot Crate also offers 16 other awesome crates from our pop culture classic Loot Crate to some gaming favorites, including Fallout and Halo. Uh, this month's crate will sell out. You must order by the end of this week to guarantee yours as it's going to go. Get the best surprises each month from the largest gaming uh, and geek subscription company out there. Uh, subscribe now by going to LootCrate.com slash games and enter my code games to save an exclusive 30% off on your subscription. LootCrate.com slash games, my code games to save 30% off. I'm liking this uh, Soul Calibur 2 Silent Hill Psychonauts and Cuphead stuff. That's like the Jared crate right did there. Did you know that Tim beat Cuphead? Tim beat Cuphead. Cuphead. When, when did this happen? A long time ago. I didn't know that. Yeah. No. Uh, Ludwig from Vienna writes in to kindoffunny.com slash KFGD and says, questions for Mr. Petty. Ah, Number one, how is your Dragon Quest XI going? Uh, stalled by other games and my vacation. I didn't play it because I was out of town, so I only brought my Switch and DS with me. Number two, what other games did you play on your vacation? Well, let's see. I played a few things. I brought along them NES Classics yeah. uh, on my Switch, sure. and they worked for a complete week, just as promised, and then... The final day when there was no Wi-Fi and no chicken, they did not work anymore. Yeah. <laughs> Just as promised. Just as uh, promised. But that's fine. So I played a lot of Ghosts and Goblins, which is a terrible NES port okay. that I still play a lot because I'm obsessed with beating it. Uh, I played some of that Capcom Brawler collection oh, okay. when I was out there. had fun with that. Even single player had fun with that a little bit. Uh, and I played a lot of The Messenger. Oh, did you? Which 
at this point, I believe should have a Surgeon General's warning on it, warning you how badass and awesome it is. That's what I hear. Of that, course, full disclosure, my wife, Jen, uh, did uh, PR brand management stuff for it. Okay. That, well, she picked the right game to do PR and brand management for Well, I just want to say, you know, for any inte- anything I say about the messenger, I want you to know. I want the full disclosure on what no. I, I have. The messenger is game of the year material. Really? Oh, yeah. It's it's one of the best games I've played in a long time. What Did you play Celeste? Oh, yeah. Well, how does it match up against Celeste? I've been doing that a lot uh, of the two. Uh-huh. Uh, I think Celeste at this point narrowly edges it out for me in terms of my personal preference. Right. If someone were to come to me and say, I prefer the messenger to Celeste, I would say, okay. You get it. Uh, I get it. This but, seems like the thing that is hard to communicate, and I don't even know it, but when I do talk to people about the messenger, it's the, yeah, it's fun. Oh, it's cool, cool. And then there's a twist in the center, right, where the game becomes something different. Yes. And it's like, wow, it, it's hard to communicate with that without ruining the game for people so people aren't necessarily getting all the way to it. I, I was, to I was it. watching Scream recently. Scream? Uh, oh, the, the movie, movie Scream. Scream. Yeah, yeah. yeah. One of the things I love about Scream is that it's a sort of a uh, sort of a dissection of what makes horror movies work. It, it, it takes all the staples, breaks them down, and makes them apparent for you to see, but does so in an entertaining way. The man who shot Liberty Valance, the John Ford Western, does the same things for Westerns. It's John Ford blowing up his entire career before that, taking every movie he's ever made before apart. Yeah. In front of you and still making it entertaining and poignant. The messenger does that for video games. Huh. And that's what I like about it. Okay. Uh, it is a metatextual game that is also ridiculously fun from beginning to however far I am right now. Okay. I look forward to seeing what you think of it when it's all said and done. Yep. And then number three from Ludwig, are you, Jared Petty, going to buy the PlayStation Classic? Uh, I don't know. The five games they showed me didn't do a lot for me. I love Jump, jump and Flash as much as the next guy. Yeah. Uh, but... I can play that on PSN right now. Um, I like mini consoles. 100 bucks is a lot. I put a list, uh, a personal list on Twitter of the games that I would want to see on it. Uh-huh. I put a list on, or I contributed to an IGN list about the same thing. Unless like 14 of those 15 games are on there. No, probably not because I think they chose the wrong. There are plenty of PlayStation games that are really fun and poignant today. And they have not showed me many of those at all. Mm-hmm. They showed me a bunch of... I understand the nostalgia, but the difference between this and, say, this SNES Classic is that the games in the SNES Classic are 18, 19 of the best video games of their decade. Sure. And that is not what I got from PlayStation Classic for more money. Okay. Oh, I'll tell you what, Jared. I've been looking ahead trying to figure out where I want to take you because I got a lot of stuff in here. You know what I mean? Yeah. Are you going to buy it? Or long in the tooth. PlayStation Classic? Yeah. I have no plans to at this moment. I'll see what the next games are. I'm just, you know, hold on. Yeah, here we go. We'll, 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 Sam from Minnesota, this plays in your question. Okay. I'm just not, I used to always have a joke on GameScoop, right? Old game is old. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't want to go back and play. I, it's old stuff I either have played and have nostalgia for, mm-hmm. or it's not. And so, like, when N6, or when the NES and the SNES Classic drops, it's like, oh, those are cool. Now, granted, I don't have the nostalgia value for those. Right. I was a Sega kid. But it's also the thing of, like, I just can't envision myself sitting down and wanting to play through Legend of Zelda on this little machine and that thing, especially as like there were, you know, the virtual console, there is this new Nintendo online system. Mm-hmm. You get it different ways that way. If I was really invested in those kind of games, I'd want them in that kind of platform and format. Yeah. And so like to, PlayStation one classic looks awesome. I love the, I, I have a lot of great memories of my PlayStation one, but I don't need that trinket on my shelf. I'm never going to play it on my TV. For we, me, it's weirdly less about nostalgia maybe than you'd think. I mean, yeah. I do like the, I like small, cute models of things. So yeah, they, yeah, they yeah. did get me on that. But I like playing old games because they're good. Oh, Some sure. of them. Some of yeah, them. Yeah, yeah. I like playing good old games. And I like playing bad old games for context. Sure. Those collections were just so many wonderful games that hold up. The, the NES Classic, two thirds of those games are good. The SNES Classic, almost all those games are good. Yeah. And if you've never played Final that, Fantasy VI yeah, yeah, slash three, yeah. that game's just as good today as it was when you played it. And I get that. And I, don't get me wrong. And it's like, you know, I was, it's the, still this thing, but now with uh, NES or not uh, Nintendo Online, right? I've still never, as a Sega kid, completed Super Mario 3. Mm-hmm. Like, I've, t- I've tinkered and I tried to, I started up on DS once and never got it. It's, that seems to be what happens with me in old games. Sam from Minnesota writes into kindoffunny.com slash KFGD to be part of this very conversation. 
He says, how the fuck do you guys pick what games to replay through and when? I'm at the point right now where there's plenty of games, most notably Ori in the Blind Forest, I want to replay through. However, at the same time, I'm not buying Assassin's Creed Odyssey because I won't have enough time to beat it by the time Red Dead comes out. It feels like there's not enough time for me to play through new games, not to mention my backlog, and not to mention the games I want to play through again. I don't have the responsibility of playing the newest stuff like you do, so and I'm overwhelmed as it is, so how do you manage, Chicken? I don't, is my answer. I don't yeah. manage. I miss quite a few things, and I try to take a buffet sampler approach to them. The problem is I'll get hooked on something and play way too much of it when I'm trying to do that. Sure. <sighs> And then I still want to go back and have that. I really do try to play one older game for every new game, but that's largely about it reminding me of something and wanting to go back and compare them. Yeah. Um, uh, that, that That's a big thing for me. You mentioned not playing through Mario 3. Um, we should play through that together. And see, that thing is, we, yeah, we should. When are we going to fucking have time? Like, I don't know. It, Sam's right of like, that's my thing is, I'm playing the newest stuff and because yeah. that's my job. And, you know, I want to be a tastemaker and talk about what's happening in the moment. That's how, you know, the content we make. Uh, that's why it is trouble when guess what? I'm fucking hooked on Octopath. I'm hooked on Valkyria Chronicles. Yeah. So for three games casts, I'm like, that's all I'm playing. And yeah. like, I'm playing Assassin's Creed right now and I love it, but Red Dead is looming and I'm not going to beat Assassin's Creed. I bet by the time Red Dead gets, no, I, I'm have, I'm coming up with bizarre strategies to find a way to do both of this. I mean, I'm going to be playing Red Dead till my eyes bleed. That's yeah. kind of what I do. Yeah. And yet here's Odyssey, a game that was really made for me. I Greek studies, Mediterranean yeah, yeah, yeah. studies, Near East. It's that's my so thing. Good. It's so good. And so what I've told myself, I, I applied for the Google streaming right. uh, uh, beta, uh, beta or whatever they're calling, uh, they call the, the demo Test thing. Phase. So I'm hoping I get into that, and that way I can play it in my browser ex post facto yeah, yeah. While I, and play Red Dead beforehand. Sure, so that's yeah, what yeah. I'm hoping for. And so that's the thing of like, I just don't, like the PlayStation 1 Classic or whatever they're calling, is that what they're calling? It's like, cool, that's awesome. I can't tell you the times on the Vita, right? And PSP. If you, yeah, well, if you did that, whatever. When I would like, oh, cool. I got Peace Walker or I got Metal Gear Solid or I got some other old game that is beloved. I, I love this game. And the times I would start it on a new platform, even with trophies for Peace Walker, right? And be like, I'm going to get, yeah. I'm going to platinum this game and get a few hours in and be like, ah, oh, man, I got to go play this. I got to go do that. I got to and get distracted and never do it. The well, amount of times some, I started stuff. Yeah. Something I have to do is be very proactive. I literally list this stuff out in notebooks. And, but for me, my, my particular perspective on what I do in games now is that context is what part of what I help offer to a place like kind of funny or to some of the other work I do. So it's kind of like being a movie critic. If I stop watching old movies, mm -hmm. I lose the ability to contextualize the new sure. movies I'm watching. And since that's kind of where I play into this, I need to keep prioritizing that maybe more than somebody in your role who is the face and leadership of an organization and, and is always on the bleeding edge of what's next. Yeah. So we have to have we are prioritizing, but we're neither one of us is getting our hands on everything as much as we'd like. And I don't think it's possible anymore, right? I always joke around. It never like, was. In 2007, That's the secret. I it never was. In 2007 at IGN, I definitely felt like I played everything of consequence that would really? come out. Because it was so, it was like, it was manageable. I remember the summer when there was nothing and I played uh, the Paper Mario on Wii all the way through. Uh -huh. Like, I was like, when the fuck would I ever have that kind of free time again? I mean, were I'm you playing like Muramasa when it was new on Wii or were you playing, you know, uh, a, a Dragon's Crown or, you know, because I think That's a good about, point, actually. You're or putting things on, on holes. Steam. Or, holes. Yeah, fuck. No, I was playing things on Steam. Was Dude, on? let me tell you, 2007, 2008, what a great time because it seemed like PC gaming was about to die. Yeah. We were all so fucking happy. <laughs> we were like, it's almost over. Not for all of us. We've, uh, they're Are you taking a knee. Uh, I have a great photo on my phone of of uh, Mike Thompson putting a giant cardboard gravestone on Charles Onyet's desk that nah, proclaimed man, the death that's about PC the time game. I bought my Alienware M11X 11 you fucking nerds you ruined everything laptop. for us you brought us microtransactions oh. I hope you're happy it's all your fault Joe gets the final question of the day writes into kindoffunny.com slash kfgd and says why isn't there more conversation around life is strange's Life is Strange 2's price increase from the first one yesterday I heard Greg and Tim talk about why it was possible concurrence were down from oh why possible concurrence were down from Life is Strange One and while a lot of you said I agree with price never came up Life is Strange One was twenty five dollars and season two is forty dollars I could not find any reviews or any mention of this change and how that potentially impacted the value and possible length comparisons to season one mm. maybe there are higher production values maybe their choices are even more impactful to the narrative but maybe they just raise the price and in order to fund this style of game anticipating a decrease in I don't understand where you're going. Uh, I wonder what you think of all this if you can see a justification for a $60 price increase yet also I don't 
Also, I do not mean for this to come off the wrong way, but is this something you were even aware of, given you were given the game for free? It's something that I, as someone who pays for all of their games, noticed the moment pre-orders went up and has made me wait for reviews and a potential sales. Thanks, Joe. Okay. So Sorry, I stumbled about, through that, Joe. So I should have done more copy editing to you. Price point conversations are taken very seriously. Uh, they are going to be analytically driven, but ultimately somebody still has to make a call, uh, probably a group of people in this situation sure. between the publisher and the developer. And they will go with what their data and their gut and probably office politics sure. <laughs> tell them is going to uh, be most likely to make them the most money in the short and long term, allowing them to have a sustainable franchise that continues to a third season. Yeah. Um, I suspect that they knew that people were going to be slower to get on board to a second season of Life is Strange and compensated some for that. Uh-huh. Uh, I, I don't know that. Uh, I also but suspect I, no, but that, that they, that's how you you're nailing. I mean, you're right. I'm I'm with you so far. But that's a big part. I think that doesn't get discussed enough of how you price something, right? Of like, well, you know what percentage of the player base you originally had will come over regardless. But you also know, as we talked about yesterday, like in I'm comparing Telltale, but like what the drop off from a Walking Dead one to a Walking Dead two is going to be. What the drop off from a Batman yes. one to a Batman two is going to be. How much harder it's going to be at headlines. You do need to figure out how you want to make your money up front and how you need to do it and not worry about if it's going to be a runaway success. If there's going to be more players than last time, you need to sit there and actually concentrate on how to make money it, as a business. It, yes, exactly. And it's extremely difficult to do that. That and you have a lot of predicative analysis, but you're never sure. Yeah, uh, things will surprise you very quickly. And one of you know people, there are data experts out there. There really are. But, but one of the things that that I think is true about most industries is that we know less about what statistics mean than we pretend we do. Yeah, there are usually people in a business that understand what statistics mean. Those people are not always listened to. Uh, because somebody can sit at the other end of the room and say, but I see this, that, this, that, this, that, same as you. And I think it I, means this. This is what it equates to. It equates to this. I think so. Well, somebody else says, well, I think it equates to this. Yeah. yeah. One of those people is right. <laughs> so it, it is a guessing game to a point. Um, I think that $40 for a season works for me. I think they're well aware it won't work for everybody. Sure. And uh, I mean, there, there's the yeah. How are you going to convert this? How are you going to do that? I do think, and you're, you know, he is there. You know, I wonder what you think of all this. If, if you can see a justification for a sixty dollars price increase yet, what I can tell you again, right, is that I think th I, the voice acting's a lot be better. Not that it was bad in Life is Strange One, yeah. but I do feel like the production value of this game has been increased, mm -hmm. where it runs better than Life is Strange One, yeah. which I then means I bet there was more people working on the engine, which means I bet more people I don't nod were working on this title in general. You saw. Uh, I saw it in the credits, and then I saw a Steve tweet about it. Steve Gaynor came in to help them punch up dialogue. And I'm not saying he costs a lot of money, but there are more hands on this trying to make sure this lives up to the expectation of what you expect it to be. Well, Life is Strange Season 2 is a risk. Yeah. I mean, a lot of sequels aren't that risky. If a game was marvelously successful and we know it's going to be new features built on top of old features. You know, it, you take a shooter and it's shooter part two. It was good shooter and now it's great shooter. Yeah. We have a pretty good idea that that's going to do well. Yeah. But with a story driven game, that's much less true. It's harder to point to Especially those. taking away the fact of like, cool, it's new characters. It's exactly. a new setting. It's not it's not Max and Chloe. You don't you necessarily you don't have a built in connection already to them. You have to believe in the format of what these games are and go from there. And that's very hard to sell. And so I feel like you do have to have it where there's people of like myself that played it and were, thought it was great and were blown away and didn't you know expect certain things to happen in it to be like, Yeah, this game was great and it is worth your money. I think it's worth forty dollars so far from what I've played. Again, as you point out, I got it for free. You ask, you know, did this come up or were, were you even aware of it? I was aware of it from when they announced it but at this point i totally forgotten about okay. it and i do think it's worth calling out uh i could not find in any review i cannot find in reviews any mention of this change and how that potentially impacted the value and possible length comparisons to season one I hear you. I don't think that's the place for a review, right? The review does, is this game worth your money, period? I don't think it needs to be, hey, comparison to that. It would have been helpful, I think, in the articles about concurrence. Concurrence are way down. It's interesting. Is that because of this? Yeah, my anecdotal observation, I can't prove this, um, but but between the time that I spent writing reviews and, uh, and what I've seen in the industry lately, the days of cost being a significant factor in reviews with the exception of vastly disproportionate cost changes, yeah. is extremely unlikely. Value proposition is going to be less important to a contemporary mainstream outlet reviewer than uh, than simply is the game good. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, that that I I'm not can't speak for every outlet. That would be ridiculous. Uh, but that seems to be the focus of the places I read, not how much is the game cost versus how good is the game, but simply is this game good or not? That's why I don't think you need to see that. And that used to be a big part. Oh, yeah. Totally. Conversations, but I think that's I think that's largely passed. Yeah. It's time to squad up, everybody. This is where you go to kind of funny dot com slash KFGD. Give me your name, username, platform of choice, and why you need help in a video game. Joe from Libertyville, Illinois, needs help on PlayStation 4. Joe's PSN is hot damn I rock 89, all one word. I just love that that means there are at least 88 other hot no, damn I rocks. Nah, he was born in 1989, don't get tricked. He says in your best John Wayne voice, I'm not even going to try. Do you want to try? No, I can't do John Wayne. Looking for some best friends to get lost with. Looking for Jeremiah Jared Petty Johnson in the mountains out west later this month. Oh my, I'm a mountain man. Apparently, if you want to play Red Dead Redemption 2 online with hot damn I rock 89, get on it. I PSN did have a friends. little Jeremiah Johnson going on last week. Like I had the beard yeah, was the twang, way longer. The twang I had the twang happening. going on. Yep. I was kind of rustically. I was up in the woods. I found an old abandoned mine. It was fun. Cool, Greg. Yo. The iPad's not here? What do I do for you wrong? What do I do for you wrong? Sorry. <laughs> I got my laptop here. <laughs> Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, we ask those watching live on twitch.tv slash kind of funny games to go to kind of funny.com slash you're wrong and tell us what we screw up as we screwed up so we can set the record straight for everybody watching later on youtube.com slash kind of funny games and listening games? on podcast games? services kind of around games? the globe. The globe, you say? The globe. Dare we say the universe? Uh, Tim Cook says, <laughs> Apple Watch battery life is not three hours, Jared. It's up to 18. I know it's supposed to be up to 18 until you actually try to use, say, LTE on it, and then, yeah, whatever. Oh, Zaire corrects us. Thank you. This is helpful. Avalanche Software was acquired in early 2017, not okay. 2018, Good. with job listings in August 2017. Yeah. Thank you very much. Much more feasible now. Uh, I was correct on, and Kebab says I was correct on the pre-installed games thing. Yeah, the remake of Shadow of the Colossus and Destiny 2. Uh, oh, yeah. Kebab says the Roman game for Xbox One. Jared was thinking it was Rise, made by Crytek. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it wasn't. We said Rome. Rise, Son of Rome? Or so, yeah, Rise, Rise. Rise, Son of Rome? Rise, Son of, of Rome. Suck. Rise, oh, wow. Son of... Got it right there. Yeah. Son of Rome, yeah. Son of is. launch title. A lot of people are correcting us on that because they loved that, apparently. Oh, really? King Kong versus Rise. That's the next... Uh, that should be like the Xbox Two launch title. Definitely. King Kong versus Rise. Just take launch titles from each gen and put them together. AJ says, Nick says, Greg, you mentioned Fortnite had 48 monthly active users in August. It actually had 74.8 monthly active users. Looks like there was a seven missing out front. Thank you for that correction. Oh, the ass captain says Batman, the enemy within was released on switch today. Oh, Um, did it have his penis? No, that's damned. That's, that's a comic book. That's a different, different different thing altogether. No, no bat, no bat game penis. Yeah, correct. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, things I never thought I'd do in life were Google Batman penis. I hear you. Arvel writes in and says, according to IGN News article from May 2017, CD Projekt Red is not involved with the making of the Witcher Netflix series. Correct. But I was saying, anytime the Witcher comes up, this would be the cloud of like, and it's also interesting, you might have heard of the Witcher in recent news because of their fucking fighting over the rights. I wasn't saying that, but thank you for pointing that out for everybody. RIP Superman, long live Henry Cavill. Geralt of Rivia. He's not. We don't know if he's done being Superman. Raven Wishes says Gog is a division of CD Projekt. Uh, yes. Uh, yeah, I think that's in the article. Didn't we say that? I, I thought we did, but it doesn't. It, yeah. Maybe we didn't. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, Gog. How I Zaire says Exorder is coming to Switch on October 16th with cross platform play between Switch or Steam. Sorry. Um, <sighs> so excited to play Lightning Force on Switch. I can't, can't wait. wait. Jared, did you want to get salty about something? I thought you might have said that. It's not quite salt. Okay. Um, no, this is just uh, that PSA. Ladies and gentlemen, in many parts of the country, voter registration will close in just a few days. Uh, go register right now. Many states you can do it online. Uh, it takes like three minutes. Uh, you can go to Rock the Vote. Uh, just They'll connect you with your state's voting registration and apparatus. And uh, just vote. Do it. Uh, other, it's important. Would you say Rock the Vote? Uh, I would, in fact, say rock the vote. I, I just got my registration done for this year. I, you know, I've moved, so I had yeah. to re-register. And, uh, yeah, go for it, guys. Uh, and if you have any doubt at all about your state and whether or not you're registered, for heaven's sakes, check. Again, Super easy to check online. Yeah, 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 Just find out uh, because uh, with the November elections coming up, if you don't do it in the next few days in a lot of places, you're not going to be able to do it at all. Got to get on it. Ladies and gentlemen, tomorrow, 
I'll be in New York City for the IGN Esports Challenge. That's right. Uh, doing another one of them hosting gigs out at IGN. It's on IGN and Twitch and all that business at nighttime. Me, Golden Boy, a bunch of UFC fighters playing video games. Um, so watch that. We'll host it, I'm sure, here. Tomorrow, that means, though, for Kind of Funny Games Daily, it's Jerry Petty and Gary Widow. Oh. I'm very excited for that It's going to be a 170-minute episode of Kind of everybody. Funny Games Daily. Yeah, we'll see. If you didn't know, ladies and gentlemen, this has been Kind of Funny Games Daily. Each and every week, on a variety of platforms, we run you through the nerdy video game news you need to know about. If you like that, be part of the show, kindoffunny.com slash KFGD. Watch us record it live, twitch.tv slash kindoffunnygames. Watch it later, youtube.com slash kindoffunnygames. And listen on podcast services around the globe no matter where you get the show thank you so much for your support consider going to patreon.com slash kind of funny games where you can get all sorts of goodies but mainly keep the lights and mics on jared's got a red dead redemption podcast oh called red dead radio you should listen to oh i I really hope that you will uh i went away on vacation i came back and lots more people are listening to it it was pretty exciting big success everybody played no not a big success but could use your help in that uh we're uh we've played the game we got got a lot of inside information on it uh went through the new trailer yesterday with the breakdown that's up right now gonna have another episode of that up very soon but yeah go the last few episodes are all real good and just chock full of info you may not be able to get other places about red dead also, none of this is going to ruin. If you're if you're like, man, I'm on blackout. It's just about cool features and details. We're not going to, yeah, we're not going to spoil story for you. We're not going to ruin anything for you. But it, it, it's a this game looks unfreaking real. So, yeah. ladies and gentlemen, until next time, it's been our pleasure to serve you. <laughs>